How much time would you spend on a low-cost carrier? Like, honestly, let me know in the comments what the maximum flight time is you would do without entertainment, power ports, free food, or drinks. If you answered anything less than 12 hours, then the following video isn't going to be for you. Because that's a flight I'm doing today, traveling from Berlin-Brandenburg to Singapore Changi on Scoots Boeing 787. 12 hours. Let's get into it. Hello and good morning from Berlin, where we're on our way to the airport right now. Luckily, with Berlin's new airport, you can just take the train there, which is super convenient. And while I loved Tegel Airport, it was only reachable by bus or car, which was pretty bothersome. We actually covered the end of Tegel Airport on our channel extensively, including a video about the final ever flight to take off from there, so make sure to check out that emotional trip as well. We just arrived at Berlin Ostkreuz station, from where we can take the FEX, the Flughafen Express, which is just 3 euros and 80 cents and takes only 20 minutes. Cheap and fast, that's how every airport in the world should be connected to its closest city. Check in for Scoot was quick and easy as well, so we can head straight to our departure gate. There was a couple ahead of me in the check in line who checked a bag and the tech just said Sin Mel. And wow, Singapore on a low cost carrier is already something, but connecting onto another Scoot long haul flight to Melbourne, Australia, that's commitment to a good deal. <laughs> Our plane has just arrived from Singapore. Today we're flying aboard 9V OFI, a 2017 build Boeing 787-8. Scoot currently has 10 Boeing 787-8s in their fleet, as well as 10-9s. With those 20 Dreamliners, they serve an extensive network of short and medium haul flights within Asia, as well as long haul flights from Singapore to Jeddah, Athens, Berlin, Melbourne, and Sydney. Dankeschön. Thank you. Scoot's Boeing 787-8 has a whopping 335 seats divided into a premium section up front called Scoot Plus, which has 21 recliner seats in a 232 configuration. Between that and door 2, you will find a small section of economy class which is called Scoot Silence. Those seats do feature the standard 333 configuration, but in contrast to the rest of economy class, they offer extra legroom, adjustable headrests, and you're not allowed to sit here with babies, hence Scoot Silence. And behind door 2 is the rest of economy class, where you can bring as many babies as you want. And you won't find a single adjustable headrest on any of those 281 seats, except on the bulkhead rows. As for every video I do, I pay extra to reserve a window seat with a good wing view, which cost 14 euros in the regular economy cabin on this flight, while those seats in Scoot Silence and bulkhead rows cost a bit more. I'm in 33k, and as mentioned, there are no adjustable headrests. The legroom, however, isn't as bad as I feared. It's not really good, but with my height of 180 centimeters, I can live with that for 12 hours. Each seat also has a standard tray table, and um, that's it. No, actually, there are universal power outlets beneath the seats, but there is a catch. They are turned off and will remain off unless you pay to use them. And they don't come cheap. On this flight, it's a whopping 11 Singapore dollars, which is around 7 to 8 euros. So uh, that's flying on a low cost airline. There is literally nothing else I can show you about the seat. Obviously, there are no pillows or blankets. So let's just sit back, relax as much as we can, and get ready for departure. Exit may be behind you. 
During evacuation, do not take your belongings with you. Please smoke is present, keep low, and follow the lights to the nearest exit. After takeoff, the crew started handing out the pre-ordered meals. During the booking process, you can add hot meals to your flight, which I did for 6 euros and 50 cents each, as I ordered two of them. While booking, you could also prepay for Wi-Fi plans or purchase amenity kits. My first meal was Nazi Lemak, which came with a 300 milliliter bottle of water and a pack of chocolate lava cookies. It tasted like a pretty standard microwavable meal, so not all that great, but good enough for me. The chocolate lava cookies were delicious though. In any way, make sure to bring extra food and drinks with you on this flight. The prices to buy stuff on board are not good at all. Using the in-flight Wi-Fi, you could look through everything Scoot offered to upsell you. The meals are a bit more expensive when bought on board instead of pre-ordered and some options were unavailable after the first service already, so it's a good idea to pre-order them if you already know you want one. The beverage prices, especially the one for water, are egregious. A bottle is 3 Singapore dollars, so around 2 euros, but it's only a 330 milliliter bottle, which brings the per liter price to a whopping 6 euros. Considering that you should usually drink at least 2 liters of water during the day and this flight being 12 hours long, you'd have to spend 12 euros just on water alone to stay properly hydrated. The cup noodles were probably the most fairly priced food option, and compared to what alcohol costs on the ground in Singapore, those prices didn't shock me either. You could also see that using the power outlets is cheaper on shorter flights. Using the Wi-Fi, you could play some games for free, and there was an in-flight map available, but no possibility to stream movies or TV shows, which is surprising. I expected Scoot to offer some type of stream to your device entertainment system, at least as an add-on to pay extra for. In addition to the Scoot silent seats up front, the bulkhead seats throughout the plane also had adjustable headrests. Also seats you had to pay extra to reserve, and that the crew made very sure nobody just sat down on during the flight who didn't pay for them. watching the sun set while cruising above Karachi, Pakistan. Now it's time for our second pre-ordered meal. This time what Scoot calls Mum's Fried Rice, which was again served alongside a bottle of water, and some chocolate lava cookies. A bit bland and really not all that great, but okay, I guess. Now it's time to start our approach into Singapore. So, Scoot. Well, the easiest conclusion to draw is you get what you pay for. Even including a checked bag, two meals, and the seat reservation, my ticket only came out to 320 euros one way, which is a pretty good deal. 
in that sense, it's pretty pointless to suggest things Scoot can improve on because they simply don't have to. There will always be people who are willing to fly with this level of comfort if the price is right, and I count myself amongst them. For me, what bothered me most was the price for bottled water. I can make it 12 hours without food, but people need to stay hydrated, and three Singapore dollars for 330 milliliters is just too much in my eyes. At least make them normal half liter bottles. 11 Singapore dollars for using the power ports is also a bit impolite. It costs Scoot nothing to provide that for free, so it's really just a money grab. And Scoot might benefit from taking a page out of Air Asia's recipe book, because those two meals were not all that great either. Having flown Air Asia twice in the past year and having had a pre ordered meal on both flights, I'm confident in saying that these were considerably better. But what do you think? Would you fly on Scoot if the price is right? In any way, thank you very much for watching and coming along today. I hope you have enjoyed this video and will join me again on another trip very soon. Thank you. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel and if you want to further support our mission to provide no-nonsense first-hand reviews of as many different airlines as possible, please consider becoming a paid sponsor for our channel right here on YouTube like all of these amazing aviation enthusiasts have done already. Thanks again for watching, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you for a new video next week.